I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey, the East End for Evil. And I'm the Gamer in Yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. And tonight we have Red Mist Loose Ends. So before we begin, uh, Mikey, it's good to see that you've diffused from Gamer from last week. Yes, yes. He uh... couldn't be here in body, so... He wanted to be here in spirit, literally, so we did a yeah. Dragon Ball Z fusion situation. Oh, I thought I just promoted into you. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were just a meat puppet. <laughs> a meat, uh, like a sock puppet, just like... Well, as far as my piloting. consciousness knows, it was a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. But Fair. that may not be the case, but that's as far as I know. <laughs> you think it's a symbiotic relationship, but it's really a parasitic relationship. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. This is fine. Everything's fine. You're just like a like a, a flood moth, a flood drone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, we are doing uh, Red Mist Loose Ends by Icy Dice, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go into the uh, recommendations for this one. Um, I'm going to recommend this one. Uh, I am not going to recommend this one. Interesting. Okay. Gasp. Um, I will recommend this one. Okay. Uh, let us then dive into the rundown and our notes and such and see why these are the way they are. <laughs> Mikey will sway us. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's see. Like, I'm, I'm kind of leaning like partial, but like I'm willing to give it a, a recommend an initial initial recommendation, but uh, anyway, let's let's begin with the the rundown first. So we have this narrator who cuts straight to the chase and brings us the truth. I do in quotes behind the inception of the Squidward's Suicide Story or Red Mist. Uh, in the Nickelodeon studios, there was an argument with various animators and writers tied to SpongeBob SquarePants, the show. Uh, who didn't like that SpongeBob was going to be continuing production after the first three seasons and the feature film. Even the show's main writer left as a result of the decision to prolong the series. It's an unfortunate thing that actually does happen uh, and, and occurs often in the entertainment industry. Like, Did that actually happen with that show? Yeah, <laughs> and it, it, it's and this isn't like an isolated incident. It happens all the time in 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 TV shows and stuff of that. When like the corporation wants to keep uh, yeah. keep making the show, and the original writer is like, "No, I only had it planned for this like this many seasons," and I told you I was done after that. And then it's but like, then they're like, "But money." Yeah, it's like <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Bye. I have my integrity. Mm. Um, that kind of thing. And then the show kind of like will get new writers and the whole blah blah, blah. like it's the the sad part of like the industry is just like again the the greed of corporations um yeah the true horror. so yeah i have that in my actual thoughts actually <laughs> <laughs> cut that out no it's fine i'll, I'll bring it back up um Gross. you keep that down <laughs> god damn it um uh, it seemed that some of these animators that had left the studio were now sending creepy, disturbing splices of episodes to the studio with messages warning them to stop the show's production or they would begin distributing these tapes, potentially harming the studio and franchise's reputation. So the studio decided to get ahead of the curb and write these outlandish creepy pastas, which were popular at the time online. Um, about the show and uh, and these said episodes, so that even if the content did get out there to the pop to to the public, it would be tied to the these silly spoopy stories and not the company itself. Um, some more internal details of how Red Mist tapes and notes affected the studio's relations and office environment and what was truthful about the original creepypasta that came out and how the higher ups reacted to the tapes being delivered to the office uh, is what we get through the rest of the story. And following with 
Nair revealing themselves to be perhaps the messenger of these tapes that the uh, higher ups were looking for within their office. And um, now they are a former intern of, uh, or signing off the signing off the story as a former intern of Nickelodeon. Finn. <laughs> yeah. So also, it is ahead of the curve. Not ah. Oh, sh- okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's it's a common mistake. I said repeatedly as well. Fair. Uh. All right. And then with that, uh, spe- <laughs> that's a nice segue for uh, yeah. everyone tolerates the grammar inquisitions at this point, and yeah, no you. one is no one is above the inquisition. No, <laughs> <laughs> not even the inquisitors <laughs> themselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got this. This I got, I got two of them. Honestly, um, oftentimes this leaves the workers of an animated television studio in a catch twenty two of sorts. So oftentimes should be one word. Really? Yep. I, I actually don't believe you. Yeah. No, I, I, so so Google why like Google told me that like <laughs> Google informed me that it was squeaky lines. However, when I googled when I actually went on Google and like typed in like oftentimes, um, I found that it was a, a compounded word. Are you still looking it up? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Okay. I mean, uh, you're right. It just it's. That looks so wrong to me. I know, but it's it's right. <laughs> so, at least according to writing. <laughs> mm. So, so uh, it's not often times. It's often times. Yeah, often times. Yeah. God damn it! I learned a thing. How dare? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll move on to my last one. Mm-hmm. The camera proceeded to zoom into his lifeless corpse as the sound of ocean waves played ever so softly. So this might be okay, but it bugged me when I read it, like proceed to zoom into his lifeless body and into are two separate. So I kind of just decided to get rid of them and put in, uh, proceed to zoom in on his lifeless corpse. Rather than zoom in. It, It is. It may, it may be nitpicky, but it was like, it didn't. It, there's something off about it when I read it. Yeah, it's, it's because if, if you read it the wrong way, it's zooming into his life. This course. Yeah, but and and that's the thing. Like I'm it. so and and actually kind of like body. Yeah, and kind of like the inverse of last of, of like the last thing I just said, uh, like the oftentimes thing. I'm so used to in and two being together, <laughs> like as a compounded word that like that's what I kept going to, and like that's not the meaning I think it's trying to get at. It's like yeah. It's zooming in on the the lifeless corpse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, uh, your but, option cannot be misconstrued as something else. So yeah, inherently that makes that the better option, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. Definitely. Maybe. Yes. And as I'm lounging here in the nitpick nook, uh, partially, <laughs> <As always. laughs> I'm I'm on the edge of the nitpick nook, uh, like yeah, you the sit on the, the arm. Seat. Yeah. Um. Mikey, these stands for evil. What's your uh, grammar position? Um, I have an it story. All right. And now, an it story with Mikey, the E stands for evil. Take it away. It would be bad publicity if these episodes were to air, even if they were broadcasted locally rather than from the Nickelodeon channel. It is often the case that strict deadlines will be set for them that they must conform to. It was only upon reaching the middle of the episode that the screen flickered and the animation quality somewhat decreased. It was received fairly well among the employees and producers who seemed to take it as a joke. It isn't uncommon for animators or artists to create darker versions of their usual work to have some fun. It read, ceased production, and nothing more. It showcased Patrick Starr extending his stomach out from his mouth, consuming Spongebob. It seemed as if a few people at the top felt obliged to leak such things. It was obvious to them 
that there were people on the inside cooperating with those on the outside. It was clear that they had eyes and ears within the studio. It was a reasonable explanation, and it was an explanation they accepted. It was unfortunate that I couldn't view the episode with them. It was probably another way to discredit the legitimacy of lost SpongeBob media stories by making them seem utterly ridiculous and unbelievable. Finn. Thank you, Mikey, for that second <laughs> rundown. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. There's enough yeah. context in all of those it's that it, it straight up was just a more concise rundown. Yeah, it was even, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but yeah, for those unaware, Mikey does these strings of sentences to highlight all the sentences in the story that begin with words that they probably shouldn't, like it's ins or buts, because there's always better words to use. Uh, and I guess with that, uh, gamer. Uh, I mean, I have one that's kind of okay. It might. Be... Hey, here's a question: Is it the Patrick one? Yeah. Okay, because I had that in my actual thoughts, but I was very unsure if I should put it in my actual thoughts or my my grammar. So I'm curious to see like, if it's, what the if fuck it's... is happening. Yes. <laughs> so okay. that's why I'm like, is this is it worded incorrectly? Hence grammar. Yeah, or is it actually that's happening and okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, what, what, go into it. <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, go into it. Go into it. Obviously, it yeah. showcased Patrick Starr extending his stomach out from his mouth, consuming SpongeBob. Like, I yes. don't understand the visual of that. Like, what is I, trying to be said? <laughs> I had a visual for it, but it was. I, I think I, I even when I read it and had that visual, I was like, I don't think this is actually what's supposed to do, especially when it says like it's consuming spongebob because i was getting like vibes from like a lucio fulci horror film where like somebody's stomach and like it, internal organs are literally coming out their mouth <laughs> I, um, I guess like, like the that, inside of his stomach yeah out. it's like it's like it's like it's like inflating outward like it's like coming it's coming inside out of his mouth <laughs> yeah it wouldn't be in his stomach would not sorry the outside shape of his stomach would not be extending out it would be like being sucked in because it's being pushed out through his mouth to grab him and pull him in yeah so it's like a weird like xenomorph or like get over here <laughs> like yeah, grab bit. onto him like <laughs> yeah um did you have a way to like fix that uh like that sentence i mean if that's what actually happened okay but i because i didn't really get a proper visual i just imagined his mouth just went huge and ate him yeah, okay, and his mouth and consumed SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah. it's not really gory. <laughs> yeah, his, his stomach extended as he consumed SpongeBob. Yeah, the way the way sense. I uh, yeah 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 the way I I rewrote it actually that sentence because again I had it in my actual thoughts but I wasn't sure if it was a grammar or not because it was like w visually what's happening here. <laughs> yeah. Um, it showcased Patrick Starr extending his mouth consuming spongebob whole and as a result extending his stomach that seems too like matter of factly being like this happened and because that happened this you know yeah well maybe maybe you even get rid of the and and as a result extending his, his yeah. stomach you just have like consuming spongebob whole i think i think i don't think it was supposed to be stomach i think it should have been like extending his mouth <laughs> to like oh. But then it would be extending his mouth out from his mouth. Then it'd be literally oh, well, a even more. So, I mean, I mean, so you get, I mean, like you fix it up so that it doesn't say, do that twice. Like I see, yes, yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm glad that we all had like it's like wait. <laughs> if it is meant to be that his insides came out of his mouth to grab him directly by his stomach, like with his stomach, and then pull him in, cool. Because that is a surreal, visceral, like, graphic content. <laughs> it really is. It's just, it's not described enough, if that's yeah. the case. Yeah. It, it does leave kind of a confusing description. Yeah. Like, I've read over it a couple of times. I'm like, I, I give up. 
he opened his mouth and ate him <laughs> moving on <laughs> yeah that, that's yeah. honestly I, that's i think that's what it was trying to get at but it was like it, it described it in a weird way <laughs> so. yeah for sure yeah that's basically all i had for grammar to be honest okay i'm just gonna mark show that as red huh, on my notes mm-hmm. so i don't touch it again I put an asterisk next to the the number on all of my notes if I've talked about it. Or if it I just I, I I highlight <laughs> so that I like I I know not to go ne- not not to uh, read over that again. Fair. Um, it's more visually uh, outstanding to me, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, okay. If that's it for grammar inquisition, I suppose we'll move on to actual thoughts. So I'm going to start with this one here. Squidward's suicide, otherwise known by the name of Red Mist online, is real, to an extent. Let's just say that although the story you're un- you're all familiar with is loosely based in reality, many of its more gruesome plot devices are intentionally hyperbolic. The story is littered with grammatical errors, narrative inconsistencies, contrivances, and sprinkled with references to violence against children that are in poor taste, to say the least. Each of these flaws, however, has been deliberately inserted into that ridiculous story for a specific purpose. So this is like the first paragraph or two into the story, and I'm like, oh my god, this is a conspiracy thesis for why Love Lost Episode Creep Boss, the subgenre, exists. Like, or at least why this specific lost episode, like this specific field of lost episode subgenre, i.e., the Squidward or SpongeBob lost episodes, exists. Yep. And I was kind of here for it, like as I was reading it. Um, maybe it was also maybe it was because I was every time I, uh, as I was reading the story, I kept getting um the the way it was being read in my head was the narrator from the Twilight Zone. <laughs> it's like, um. It's like, uh, it's like Squidward's suicide, otherwise known as the Red Mist online, is real to an extent. Here in the Twilight Zone, <laughs> like that kind of like you're going like um, half Shatner with that a little bit. It's too. a little shat. It's a little Shatnery, but like it's yeah. also like he's. It's also like trying to be like dramatic, like every other syllable. <laughs> yes. So and and like or matter of factly like 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 the show host from um from unexplained uh, unsolved mysteries, uh or like again Twilight Zone or the Outer Limits and stuff like that like those that serious narrator who's like waiting to like drop down the zinger of in the Twilight Zone mm-hmm. <laughs> or in the Outer Limits, <laughs> please stand by. Um, and so like kind of continuing to touch on like the idea of like this is basically just a, a conspiracy thesis somebody's written for like lost episodes and, and like and as it, i kept reading um we've we've read stories before that explain lost episodes like there's lost episodes the the titular lost episodes uh for example by slime beast um which has like has a, a bun- has an explanation of like it was some weirdo in his in his mom's garage like splicing up uh film reels and stuff like that and adding graphic material and then like hiding them in like video stores and stuff like that yeah um or like or like swapping the swapping the videos or swapping the tapes at video stores and such um and even we've even had stories about creepypastas that are made intentionally bad so that the writer who is in fact a killer can lure his critics who are his victims <laughs> to uh uh to uh to kill them and such um and i'm refer- referencing picture this by vincent Vina Cava, which was well it, it 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 it's uh it was it was something on our show if i recall correctly i remember hating it i don't know if you were there for that one he <laughs> wasn't I, hating it. <laughs> I, know, yeah, I think that was with leviathan and, oh, okay. uh, and mikey and I. I think that was mikey's first foyer into our show was a story about like <laughs> A creep bus that is intentionally made bad with like tons of stats and stuff like that because they were that's how they the killer was targeting their victims was they were targeting people who were commenting poorly on their on their story online <laughs> um so like yeah like there's there we this story kind of fits that bill as well like that like where it's like oh like here's why the story is intentionally like or why why the squidward suicide was intentionally bad kind of thing 
Yeah. Um, and we've even had stories that paint corporations as villainous monsters, more so than usual. <laughs> uh, and of course, I'm referencing Ronald McDonald House and various Pokemon pastas that involve like Nintendo and Game Freak and stuff like that. Um, but th- where those creepypastas kind of go overboard with a sensationalized version of demonizing the corp or like just kind of getting going all really like really weird with like the revelation at the end and such. I like how this one has it done in a rather rational and mundane yet conspiratorial manner. Um, like this one, I could actually maybe buy <laughs> that it was like that the corporation might have done this yeah um and it's like believable and like the horror doesn't stem from like the mati- the the lost tapes it stems more from like just the like what people are willing to do to to uh to per- to stop something from happening um it, it's a little bit more mundane you know, for the horror a- angle of it um and Kind of on that, I'll go to my next comment and or my next quote and comment. As many of you may know, Stephen Hillenberg wanted the uh, wanted the series to end following the movie, as he felt three seasons had been enough of a run for the show. The this request was denied. Nickelodeon saw the profit to be had in the franchise, and to them, that was all that mattered. This frustrated Hillenberg, causing him to leave the show altogether, along with several other shows, several uh, several of the show's original writers and animators. And to this, I'm just like, and then kind of like what you said earlier, gamer, uh, during the rundowns, like, ah, yes, the true horror was co- corporate greed and overcapitalization of creative works all along. <laughs> I mean, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and, and honestly, again, seen it happen a dozen times in real life, like, yeah. Uh, I didn't actually look up to make to see if like Steven Hillenberg left as a result of this. Like I, I probably should have, but this is a, a thing that I've seen happen before in actual, like in, a, in other TV shows and stuff of like that, where like the creator had a set amount of seasons they were rated. They, they, they were, they were planned for, like they had a whole concise plot line and like thoroughfare kind of thing. And then once it was done in their contract, they're like, all right, once this is, once the season's over, the show's over. I'm not doing any more. And then, Season six happened, or uh, season five came around for Supernatural, <laughs> and uh, the the corpse were like, "Hey, buddy, you wanna wanna keep making the show?" It's like, "No, fuck you, I'm done." I said yeah. I was gonna, I said I was done at five. I'm out. Um, and then the uh, then the guy left, and they got, and then the corporation wanting more money, brought in some more some new writers to do the stupid fucking Leviathan season an alpha season of supernatural and fuck those guys I fucking they fucking ruined supernatural for me and i love lovecraftian horror and they ruined it with the leviathans anyway sorry I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll calm down i thought you're salty about it <laughs> no not at all but they did give us the scooby-doo crossover episode yes but just one episode <laughs> at what cost <laughs> at what cost mikey at what cost <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I was yeah, yeah. So you, so again, the horror is corporate greed all along. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> hooray, late cap, uh, late stage capitalism. Uh. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh, the next thing I have here. Uh, here we go. As is common knowledge today, writers, and especially animators in particular, are not always treated well by the company they work for. It is often the case that strict deadlines will be set for them will be set for them that they must conform to. This can be especially stressful when it takes place in the realm of episodic shows. And it keeps going on about like um about how like the animators are, are like the, these these timelines like stress the the animators out and they have they either have to like go over budget uh, or like go over way uh, yeah go over budget or go over deadline and risk their jobs or like they create sloppy work that they're not proud of and like they they do this not for like not necessarily as a job but like because they love doing what they genuinely do and some of that yeah and I think this one 
this is one of the few stories about a lost episode that actually talks about a legitimate mundane horror aspect of these particular industries, like these animation industries and like, and like we, we saw it come to light during like the last couple of years. Um, like it came, it came to, it came to the light. Um, uh, what animators and, and filmmakers and stuff that uh, like were going through, like even game designers were going through, um, because it, it started leaking into social media and on the, it kind of made its way to the public eye as yeah. to like what these corporations were doing to these, to, uh, to these, to these poor people. Uh, and assholes. I, I, meant, I, I don't know why I, I think I was like trying to mean like the, I meant the corporation was the assholes, not the, yes, not yes, the I understand. Um, so like, yeah, screw like for me, this story was like, screw some weird curse that has infected the medium, like the lot, the, the tape or something like that. The stressful reality that is demanded upon workers in animation and other multimedia production studios is terrible and terrifying. And like, that's what I think really gr- I gravitated to the, like in terms of like the horror aspect of the story, because I could like, I could almost empathize with that <laughs> because yeah. of what I've, I've, ex- what I've read and experienced in like, uh, I, cause again, I'm a, I'm a creative, I'm an artist. I've not, I've had the fortune of not having too bad of like, strict deadlines on on various commissions and projects i've done but like i've heard the horror stories and uh and legit that's why they're called horror stories is because they're terrible and they're stressful yeah. and like they do ins- they do instill some kind of anxiety or fear when you read about them and you you happen to empathize with it so um yeah i i thought this was a very interesting take because again this entire story is basically a mundane version of like why the squidward suicide stories have oh, like tapes happen and stuff and it's still kind of creepy and terrifying because of that, because of the mundanity of it. It's a completely different type of creepiness, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, and then I'll move on to the next thing I have. Um, the producers decided to stop allowing chatter about the notes and tapes conti- to conti- <clears throat> about the notes and tapes to continue around the office. They reasoned that if they didn't give whichever mischievous employees were reason- were responsible for the events that were occurring any attention, they would get bored and stop. I'm, I don't think a a studio or a corporation like Nickelodeon would simply like, um, ignore the problem. <laughs> I feel like there would have. They would have they, they more more likely they would be like putting in an inquiry onto like who was doing this and have them cease and desist or even like right. buy them off if it's like an, if it, they're like somebody that's like threatening them on the outside like if it's not somebody within the office but they find out it's like some some former worker or something like that, they might even be inclined to just like pay them off it's like hey stop doing this we'll give you this money <laughs> yeah but that doesn't mean they'll take it if these guys are that's true like, but like rather but like with yeah. their want to do this and their only option is either you stop um stop production or this happens like those are the two options they it basically if nickelodeon ran out of things to do then this is the option i don't think it is because like again with a cease and desist that's jail time if you uh, continue to harass somebody like that yeah, but they also don't know who it is. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, that's like, but I'm, I'm like, just simply it's a terrorist. Like, You're dealing with a terrorist in this situation. No, I, I get that. But like, ignoring it is it like in this case, I don't think ignoring it was what the corporation would do. They'd be trying to like, I, there'd be more to it than that. It would be like they'd be doing inquiries into like their employer, their or their employees. They'd be uh, sending people out to like find out what what the other what the uh, the former employees are doing and stuff like that. Like, there'd be an inquiry of some kind. They wouldn't simply be. I will. We'll just ignore the problem, and it'll go away. Like, yeah, I, I just, I don't buy that. That's what a corporation would do. <laughs> I mean, it's possible all that shit also happened. It's just not being said. Yeah, but then it should but, be said in the story. <laughs> yeah, just the kind of feel I got is just that they kind of were at the end of the rope, and that's all they could do. That yeah, was the last ditch thing that they could do. It's all that they could do. It's all. That... <laughs> so I don't know why but that, like that, that chant is like popped in my head as soon as you said that is that from a thing i think it's just a childish thing it's like it's all they can do <laughs> i don't know okay yeah i don't know sorry <laughs> um and I yeah like that. I, I never teased people as a kid wow I, I was the one that got teased most of the time but oh i see yeah <laughs> um 
but yeah, so I, I don't I don't disagree with you, but like I feel like there should have been something added on to like where they they did try to put in do some inquiries a little bit more like into the story. Yeah. It wouldn't uh, hurt even, putting in a little bit extra information. Yeah, and they do like they do interrogate their employees. Um, it it does reference that, but like because or at least they 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 um they interrogate the the, the narrator <laughs> uh, because they find him in a, in in the uh, in the wrong room at the wrong time, sort mm-hmm. of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that could have been added, I think, to the story to like help kind of clear up my issue with it. But, um, I digress. Um, I'll move on. Uh, there were people out there who were displeased with the direction Nickelodeon was heading with the SpongeBob franchise and were trying to torment the studio into submission. The, con- the coercive nature of the notes and the tapes had begun to sink into the consciousness of the higher ups. And again, see this right here, I guess I'm not done on my, of my, my, uh, my box here on this, this right here. Um, I could actually see this happening in, in a corporate space, <laughs> like some former disgruntled worker or animator, like, like the, 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 uh, the, the action of like what these people are doing, like these, these former employees are doing like by posting these, sending these tapes and like threats to the company. I could see that kind of like semi guerrilla campaign against the company by disgruntled workers or, or animators to halt a production or damage the reputation of the franchise or studio. Like that. It's basically like corporate espionage <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Um, also, they uh, it's, know who the hell is doing it because as soon as the like uh, the head designer left, this shit started happening. So either yeah. he's doing it, or people that were like that also honestly like behind him. You know, they're the yeah, ones like, who are doing it. Yeah, like the people who the other people that left. So they have kind of like a pool of people that they uh, that All they suspect up probably. Executed. <laughs> yeah, be, be, I mean interrogated uh, <laughs> behind <laughs> behind the behind the uh, the uh, the main the headquarters of Nickelodeon's like oh like the the front is like yeah Nickelodeon yeah SpongeBob yeah Squidward and then like it, like kid, there's like a kids tour is like and now and now you see the animators and like and then just in the back pop 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 <laughs> it's like what was that <laughs> it's like what was that miss it was like oh that was just uh, some uh liquidation of, of employees <laughs> going on and 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 let's go to the gift shop children yeah. <laughs> uh like, yeah don't no, even no. try to hide it liquidation of employees really <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, I, I, that's like the nice the sterile word for like execution <laughs> yeah but uh yeah I'll, I'll move on to the next thing uh actually this is my last my last note here mm-hmm. um you can't keep avoiding us. We'll find a way to broadcast in some way, somehow. Eyes and ears were oh, eyes and ears. We're everywhere. Regards, a former intern at Nickelodeon Studios. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh shit, yeah, okay. I kind of saw. I kind of got the impression a few paragraphs prior to the end of the story that the narrator was perhaps the deliverer of the tapes and messages yeah. uh, or at least connected somehow, especially when like, he says like they bought my story. <laughs> like, like I was in the wrong place, the wrong, I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like I didn't mean to be there. And that seemed to, that seemed to, that seemed to satisfy them. <laughs> they bought my story. I was like, okay, so you're, you're, you're the guy that's behind all this. <laughs> that being said, uh, I'm realizing this kind of in hindsight, they know exactly who this guy is because he gave a very specific situation where like I was in that place and I wasn't supposed <laughs> yeah. to be there, but they bought my story. Like how many times does that happen? Well, I'm guessing if he's this, trying to keep yeah. on the DL. He's not doing a good job because they know exactly who the hell he is. Well, at this point, th- this story is more of like a, an expose, like, like a couple of years after the, after the events is like, fuck you. We're letting it all out. <laughs> I, I guess like, I'm a former I'm a former impl- intern motherfucker. <laughs> I was the ins- also getting yeah. shit for shit talking people like that, slander or whatever. He he might, but like they got to find him first. <laughs> so I guess yeah, maybe he's on the run. Yeah, he's on the lamb now, <laughs> or he's like he's like <laughs> yeah, man, like Nickelodeon corporate espionage. He knew it was so like cutthroat. He's like changed his name several times. He's had to uh, leave his family. Yeah. He's in like he's in like a 
in a motel in like the backwoods of California, like on a laptop, right typing this stuff out. <laughs> The 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 uh, the uh, the corporate ninjas or shadow runners, sorry, Mikey of of Nickelodeon are like after him now. Yep, this is all in the twenty eighties. <laughs> it is now. God, I kind of that actually would be an interesting shadow run game. Is like your your yeah, shadow runners that the... doesn't seem like it would be a bad company. Then all of a sudden, all this shit's going on. That's involved in like entertainment. So like basically, like if you take it, if you could do it, like. In our world, like as you can probably run this in like the real in the regular like modern world, or like a couple of years down the road, if you want to like add the cyberpunk stuff to it, or this could be in universe of Shadowrun, and it's just like you're you're hired by Horizon or one of their subsidiaries to take out a um a guy who's like leaking this this information that could be harmful to their reputation. Yep, that it could also be done in like Eclipse Phase as well. Again, like basically any kind of like. Es- corporate espionage style setting would work for like this kind of game yeah, or to true. use use this as, as a, for some kind of game or something like that of like and then yeah then you, you like you're you're just in there to like stop this guy or like bring him in or anything like that to the uh the higher ups and then through the through the scenario that's when you find out like the more of the details about what's going on of like they're they're disgruntled or like they they've like this was their like their 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 creative baby and they're like been like they're they're disgruntled about it and so like the corporation wants them silenced over like a fucking tv show it's like do you keep do you do it for the money and bring this guy in or do you like side with that guy like where's your moral standing on that versus your you know finances (laughs) financial standing (laughs) yeah well yeah it becomes it becomes a conflict of morality and finances (laughs) But uh, yeah, that's uh, my my actual thoughts for Red Mist Loose Ends. So, Mikey, these stands for evil. All right. Um, so, for me, this story started off basically like a documentary. Yeah. That they're just stating fact, 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 and um, just pushing it through. Like, and here we have the exhibit A, exhibit B, exhibit C. Like. When yeah, they might as well be in a courtroom. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. um, when it gets to the different explanations of other um, videos, it's like, okay, so we have the one where Patrick eats SpongeBob, and you got the one where Sandy um, basically <laughs> drowns underwater. Yeah. <laughs> um. And it's like, okay, well, it's adding new uh, creepy scenes, but adding the super mundane factor that, oh, there's just people that make these because they can't. Because Um, they're disgruntled, yeah. Yeah. Um, So, uh, for me, that sort of took away any creepiness there could be to... Um, the videos that we see part of and even uh, other potential lost footage going forward, knowing that there's potentially just people just out there making it because reason. Oh, so it's ruined all <laughs> like lost footage <laughs> stuff. Interesting. Okay. All right, fair. That's that's a take on it. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. the yeah. Yeah. Um, so for me, this just made things a lot, well, super mundane. And I didn't... <laughs> is, it because... <laughs> is it because, like, hey, that's our job? Yeah, I was just going to say, we don't really do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're the ones that usually do it. So it's like, because this is, like, no longer, a, like, just a, simply a headcanon, this is a story that somebody wrote to to kind of flesh out that headcanon that we already do on our show, it's ruined this genre of creepypasta forever for you? <laughs> Yes. Either we do it or no one does it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, there is still like a horror to it, but like, and again, this is also like not necessarily like for every like lost episode, but like it's a potential, of course. But like, and but, but we 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 do that again. Like we we 
I think I'm pretty sure the mundane uh, option always comes up when we talk about our, uh, a lost episode. So, yeah, the mundane thing we always try to think of supernatural options. If it's supernatural, we always try to think of uh, mundane options. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but the, this didn't really add any supernatural options to it. It's just oh yeah, there's just some guy at a desk just making these videos. Nope. Yeah, because <laughs> that sometimes happens. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a, when it's supernatural, it's like, oh, it's just mundane. When it's mundane, why wasn't it supernatural? <laughs> it's like, you, can't wait. <laughs> you see, the problem is it needs to be supernatural, mundane, together. <laughs> That's how would you do option. that? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> It's I'm like gonna that keep that type of magic that there. you said I like, where it's like it's magic, oh. but it seems totally normal, but it's actually it's fueled by magic. Idiosyncratic. Yeah, sure. If that's what it's called, I think that's what idios. Yeah, it's the idiosyncratic Probably. magic where it's like you can't. It's like it's like something supernatural or mystical or magical that is appearing almost mu- like it, it's appearing in the mundane world as it, as it could be something coincidental. Yeah, like something blowing off a shelf, but there's a window open, so it could have been the wind, but it might have been a ghost. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. like, or like seeing, seeing, like, like uh, the the best example I have of this is um, in the f- season one of True Detective, when they are um investigating uh one of the the killings from like uh, uh killings of um of of the main serial killer in that, uh, and like there's like messages of like the king in yellow and like, um uh carcosa and holly and stuff like that and like the one of the the investigators like walks away from the from the body and like looks out to the uh like the marshes nearby and like a whole flock of birds just kind of starts flying off and starts forming in their um in their uh their flock like their their flock formation in the sky the the yellow sign <laughs> that's probably coincidence <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's also like not the yellow sign that we all know but it's, it's like a it's a version sign. of it yeah yeah it's it's that season's version of the yellow sign, yeah. And like it's the same sign that's on like the girl, the 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 the, the killer, the woman that was killed. She has a tattoo of it on her back. <laughs> and like the like when the birds start doing that same spiral, it's like what? <laughs> it's not weird. I have a tattoo of the other yellow sign on my back. <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah. But I'm not saying like the the tattoo's weird. I'm saying that the birds making that same formation, like forming the same shape is the same is is what's weird and idiosyncratic about it yes yeah but uh i digress uh this isn't even my my bit so <laughs> <laughs> that's fine um yeah and uh i also felt it would be a good thing to bring up a one of the comments uh, oh, in the comment comments. section what uh, <laughs> Uh, the, there's a uh, comment about the Sandy video about how Sandy uh, drowns and then falls to the ground. And it's like, well, but she's underwater, so shouldn't she start floating upwards? Yeah, I had a note on that. Oh, that was so <laughs> fucking... Does that happen in the... like? Uh, or Did she die in the show? No. No, no, I mean, like, is... Because it's been a hot minute. Like I, I admit again, there's a couple things I'd meant to do. I had meant to actually like listen back to or like read the original Su- Squidward Suicide Decree Pasta <laughs> to see what happens in it. <laughs> Cause like we did that one like year one, I think, of El Dente. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> or, wasn't like, even year- there. Yeah, you weren't even yeah, you weren't even there. I think it was like year one or year two. Um But yeah, I don't recall a whole lot about it aside from like again, Squidward's suicide. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I like that. Like that, that would have been a really cool thing. Is if she like, yeah, she her she drowned and then she just starts floating to the bottom, of, or floating to the top. Although, if she's completely like, if her suit's completely waterlogged, would She'd she probably float? just float on the ground? Yeah, she just like kind of float. You wouldn't like, fall up. to the ground as if you were affected by gravity. You would just kind yeah. of float where you are. I mean, also like. Bikini Bottom and like the cartoon world of SpongeBob doesn't make a lot of sense with the uh, the underwater vibe sometimes. Yeah, hence why as soon as she dies, her cartoonness has ended, and she starts uh, like actually using real world physics because she's not a cartoon character anymore. Oh man, 
Or it's like what happens when um when SpongeBob and Patrick die in quotes in the feature film by drying up. Um, they they get up they get up to the like the they get above the water and they they start drying up and like it's very sad because like they're clearly like it's like kind of insinuating that they're going to die and as they're drying up they're becoming a sponge like a live action sponge and a live action starfish. That's hilarious. <laughs> so like now I'm just picturing like when 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 Sandy dies, um. It just becomes like she becomes squirrel. an actually drowned squirrel inside of a, like a an actual like little like miniature spacesuit. <laughs> wow, that's that's horrifying, and also I kind of that would have been kind of a cool scene to add. Cool nod mm-hmm. to that. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much the end of my actual thoughts. All right. Uh, gamer, you're up. Well, let's see what I have left. Probably not much. Right from the get go, says uh, it says that the story. This is referring to Squidward's Suicide Story. It says the story is littered with grammatical errors, narrative inconsistencies, controversies, and sprinkled with references to violence against children that are in poor taste, to say the least. Setting yourself up to be harshly judged on all of them. I'm oh, sorry, I read into that. Sorry. Let me redo that. The story is littered with grammatical errors, narrative inconsistencies, contri- controversies, and sprinkled with references to violence against children that are in poor taste, to say the least. So when I read that, I'm like, okay, um, story, you are setting yourself up to be harshly judged on all those counts. <laughs> yeah. Is it saying, like, that story does that? This one doesn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That being said, it doesn't really? Because it wasn't no. really much in the way of grammar or any weirdness so there was one inconsistency and it was the patrick uh thing and that was it i wouldn't say that's an inconsistency it's just it's it's a narrative inconsistency like like how, what does that even mean like what does that mean <laughs> like yeah i guess but yeah i do agree like otherwise yeah mm-hmm. and then after reading the, a few paragraphs in because i didn't know what i was getting into when i was reading this because i didn't see the i didn't read the previous story and all that, and so I didn't really know the references. That being said, by the time, like when I was reading everything, it explained enough that I didn't feel lost, even though I've never read the first. That's a really good. That's that's a good point on the story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> being able to like actually like bring somebody new who's never who has never touched the 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 material it's referencing. Yeah, in most situations, I would be angry here because I'm like I don't know what's going on because most stories don't give enough context but this one does yeah so but it wasn't like it really overt with it being like well you guys reading it who have read the previous story you weren't like oh i know fucking move on like you weren't feeling that right no not at all <laughs> i didn't anyway mikey <laughs> uh it's been too long yeah, it has. I mean, no, but I mean, like, I mean, like, you weren't like for this story, like, you weren't like, yeah, like, okay, so like maybe because the 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 distance of time between uh, like reading that story and then getting to this one, like, I think what gamers trying to get at is like we weren't like, all right, we know what happened, like, let's move on to this story. Like, this story actually does much like it says. We'll cut to the chase. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it just gives you the information you need with no fluff. It's nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That being said. A few paragraphs in, I'm like, what is this story? It's basically, at, at the start of it, it kind of felt like it's just basically ta- talking shit on another creepypasta. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, am I going to review a creepypasta that's reviewing a creepypasta? <laughs> it kind of <laughs> does a little bit, but it also like gives us... Yeah, yeah, sorry, continue. Yeah, and when in, when you were doing your rundown or something, you were talking about like the inception of this. I'm like, it's kind of inception-y in this situation. <laughs> yeah. I'm going like two levels deep now. <laughs> Yeah, but a few more paragraphs later, I'm like, no, it's a story injecting a shit ton of immersion and lore into an already popular story, suggesting that's yeah. a cover up and which is kind of neat. Yeah, that's what I I like reading it. I felt like I was reading, like I said, like earlier, it's like I'm reading a conspiratorial thesis. Like I felt like I was reading an essay rather than a story. Um, but I didn't hate like it didn't it wasn't dry like a lot of essays I've read. <laughs> Yeah, like it was actually an enjoyable read because it was like getting this like, all right, here's the cover up that's happened here. <laughs> yeah, I was like surprisingly like enthralled with it mm-hmm. and interested to see how this is going to go, even though 
pretty early on, you kind of know what's going on. Like this story is basically saying that this other story wasn't real and he was the cover up. And you get that like a quarter of the way through the story. Yeah. And but, then you just get more details of a, like how the studio reacted to these tapes that were coming in and like the reason why and such. Yeah. But it was interesting enough that I didn't yeah. have to stop, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. You didn't, didn't just like, like I wanted to stop. Yeah. You didn't check out half like once you got the, uh, the gist of the story. Yeah. I didn't run into a situation where it's like, where's the TLDR? Or like, I already got that, so I'm done, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then my last note is just, we already talked about that with Sandy's helmet and all that. Yeah, yeah. I do like, I do think that, yeah, the, the just hovering off, like a bit off the ground would have been like suffice. Or like, she's just like, she just starts floating, <laughs> like, not even like going up or down, just like starts like, just like stops like standing and just starts like floating, like almost like in space. Yeah, like zero G and you're like very slowly drifting to one side of the screen and it just holds on that shot. Oh God, that would be so dark. <laughs> oh man, like drown, like, <sighs> yeah, there, I've, there's not there's too couple... many worse ways to go in this world. than. Yeah, like I remember, like, it, it kind of reminds me of playing um, actually Assassin's Creed Origins um of all things and like you you there's a scene there's a there's a part in the game i won't spoil the whole thing but like you have to dive into the into the nile or into the body of water to like to to recover something and there's just bodies in the like that have been like they've tied to they've tied like one of their legs to a to a to a weight and thrown them into the water and they're just bodies and there's like they've been doing this a while <laughs> mafia's been at it for a long time yeah the, mm-hmm. the egyptian yeah the the ancient egyptian mafia yeah <laughs> all, otherwise movies, known, <laughs> uh otherwise known as the uh oh, shit, what were the what were the templar in, in in origins uh called not the hidden ones that's the assassins um that sounds about right uh the it was the cult or something like that yeah um i wasn't too far off it's the uh the cult of the widget or the cult of cosmos. Um, you know, you're part of an organization that has cult in the name. Yeah. When you kind of think it's a little weird, a little shady, review cult. Well, maybe. <laughs> hey, man, our our elder god is better than these elder gods. Well, of course, our <laughs> god is an awesome god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the uh, yeah, it's the, the cult of Wedget is the or Wedget is the uh, the one in Origins. Um, I don't even I don't even know necessarily if they're the ones that are like that like threw those people into the water. I think it might have been like another faction, maybe. But like, yeah, it's it's certainly it's certainly a terrifying thing that you when you when you uh, just dive into the water going to recover something and you're like, oh fuck, <laughs> yeah. Like so, it's that kind of like dread of like, oh shit, like, ugh. like what the hell happened here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just again, there's again, it's something. I think that it's like to me, anyways. There's something sad and like more tr- more tragic than just like there's a dead body because they drowned. It's like there's something about that. Like maybe it's because like how like sometimes like how peaceful a body looks when it's just drifting in the water. Like when you see it in like mm-hmm. movies, in like in movies and stuff like that when you see like a drowned victim or like uh and like they're they've been like they're drowned. Their eyes are open and their mouths are open and they're just like drifting. There's like they 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 can either look like peaceful, like they're like, they're just sleeping <laughs> underwater or like they're like angelic almost because they're like the l- clothes are kind of flowing or the, it's just like the dead stare face is just horrific or traumatic. Yeah. yeah for sure. Um, and so now I'm just picturing that with like Sandy and just like, uh, <laughs> that, that would definitely traumatize a child. A little bit. <laughs> well, I'm like, like your favorite character and all that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry to digress there. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's about all I have for notes, honestly. Everything else is basically brought up. All right. Uh, yeah, okay, so on to final thoughts. Um, so, once again, a story trying to explain the origin of a lost episode, uh, Creepypasta. And honestly, I like how this one was, like, this one does it. Um, like, from the, I, I dug kind of the format of it. Like, again, it did kind of feel like a, Initially, it felt like a thesis or like an essay, but then by the end, it's actually more of like just like a, uh, a confession letter yeah. <laughs> in a way. Um, it absolutely is. Yeah. Um, and because I, I've, what, by, by the end of the story, I realized like, oh no, this narrator isn't just some like disembodied, like just like the, the person writing an essay. It's actually the, like a person. 
<laughs> like it's not just a like yeah, this a document in lore of real world. Yeah, exactly. And like the idea that the big studio here, Nickelodeon, um, had them had the had the creepypasta written and posted online as a way to discredit an attack on their reputation and that of their franchise. It's a creepypasta about corporate espionage and the cover up afterward. <laughs> Um, and I'm kind of here for that. Um, even though it wasn't very spooky, um, it was it was damn well intriguing for me as a read. Um, so like like again like this, there wasn't really much spookiness in the story because uh, even like Mikey's kind of like M- Mikey's like take uh sort of rings a little true for me because it's like there wasn't anything creepy here, like supernatural or anything like that. It was more of just like it was like it was almost like a true crime, but without like, not, not the kind of true crime that you get where it, it was like a heist, true crime rather than like a murder, true crime that I was kind of following up on or one of those kind of like mysteries. Um, and I think that's still like intriguing, even though like it isn't very spooky. Um, and honestly, because of that, because of like how I am and how I liked the story, I'm going to recommend it still. So Mikey, the East ends for evil. Um, well, as you pointed out, um, so there's there... like some venom there. It's like, as you pointed out, yeah, but... <laughs> sorry, there really is, isn't much of a creepy factor at all. And it, for me, it mundane, everything to do with the lost footage for SpongeBob and even potentially other lost footage because it's just some guy doing this. Like, there's nothing creepy or supernatural about the lost footage. It's just they made it because they could. Um, Fair. So that that makes this... Like, it feels like a documentary about the SpongeBob lost footage. Yeah. And it's interesting, but it's very mundane. Um, for me anyway. <laughs> Only I get to mundaneify the creepy pastas, <laughs> sir or madam. <laughs> you took her jab. <laughs> du- 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 wow. But no, I I get where you're saying. I get where you're coming from, Mikey. Like it is. It it, it I I can see why. Like it it might like might might taint your your view of of lost episodes moving forward yeah mm-hmm. um so with that said um i don't really recommend this because like i said there's no creepy pasta it's mundane and it can in fact make other creepy pastas mundane as well so yeah, I think it's not like it's a virus. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh god, it's spreading. Yeah, the mundane virus. <laughs> mm. All right, mm. and uh, gamer. I mean, for me, I I enjoyed the read. It was not what I expected at all. Because how would you? Um, and as I said before, I had no context. But even having no context and going in with a story that starts with, I'm going to jump right into it. I was like, Oh God, I don't know what's going on. And this is in media res. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Those but are it, my really, two weaknesses. It, it was, it's, it, it kind of felt like it was going to go into media res. I don't think it actually was in media res though. No, it didn't really no, feel like it. All. So. No, just the first line really yeah. seemed like it was going to though. <laughs> yeah. So I was scared. There's the fear. <laughs> yeah. That's oh God. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the story that we got is very unique, honestly, because it's, as I kind of said before, it's injecting a whole bunch of immersion into a story that sounds like it is primarily based around, like, supernatural and voodoo mumbo jumbo or whatever it is. Yeah. So for that, I give it points for that, because I always like immersion. Because you can only believe so much in regards to magical stuff happening. Um, that being said, it is extremely mundane, and 
it removes potentially any fear related stuff that does happen with the first story. So I I am curious what would happen if you read these back to back. If reading this after it would ruin the experience of the first one. Yeah, but, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like the new spin that's on this. It was an interesting read. And as dry as it was, it kept me going through the whole thing and I didn't really I wasn't having to like jump over hurdles to get through the story. You know? It was it was enjoyable. But that being said, is enjoyable creepypasta. Because <laughs> is it really a creepypasta anymore? That's the real thing. Yeah, that's fair. Because it's talking about a creepypasta and it's mundanifying the hell out of it. And it's basically the creepy part now, as we said before, is like the mundane real life horror of uh, people losing their inter in intellectual properties to greed and all that, which I, I guess is a form of creepiness and all that, because that's shit that can happen in real life and like wreck your um, your product that you put all this time into. It's mm -hmm. just not the kind of creepiness that I generally go in expecting from creepypastas. Yeah, you, you go in expecting ghosts and goblins and stuff. Not yeah. corporate espionage conspiracy <laughs> theories. Yeah. I, I, I would also... Sorry. No, go ahead. I, I was like, I would also um, uh, suggest that, like, because this one kind of feels like a bit of a conspiracy theory, like or, like, or a cover-up reveal sort of thing, like, a, there's a conspiracy going on here. Conspiracy theories often are a subject of creep bosses as well, so... I guess it, that's true, yeah. Yeah. And, like, it is an... There is also a subgenre of like explanation slash origin story creepypastas that explain other creepypastas. <laughs> yeah, okay. But in regards yeah. to the uh, conspiracy theory, theory part, yeah. a lot of those are about something that we can't explain through normal means, like conspiracy theory about aliens or, you know, Bigfoot and stuff like that. Yeah, this it's... one. Sorry. <clears throat> no, go ahead. Uh, so I don't mean to keep cutting you off. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, I, I was just like, you're you're right. Like the like they usually are like Bigfoot and, and like lizard men kind of stuff. This one, honestly, the more I keep thinking about it, the more this does ring true as like again a non murder mystery true crime thing, mm -hmm. um, which is something that's been very popular the last couple of years, especially since the pandemic started and people just started listening to podcasts about true crimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I, the more I like think about it, like I think like that's kind of where it kind of sits for me is like it's one of those like true crime conspiracy theory sort of creepy pastas. Mm -hmm. But yep, and like if is that bad or not? Like is that does that make it a less valid as a creepy pasta? That's I think the question here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like through talking to you about this, I I still believe it is a creepy pasta. It's just. God damn, it's Monday. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. and, and to Mikey's credit, I never thought about that angle of it, of basically all conspiracy theory and all like lost episode stuff could just be completely mundanify of just like they don't want to do it anymore or they got fired and they did this and that's why it's a thing. So any supernatural ties to those are potentially moot now. Yeah, if you it, it's sort it of a... Angle. Yeah, it's it's sort of like um, uh, pulling the curtain, uh, like pulling the curtain away to reveal like the magic trick. Yes, uh, it's sort of got that kind of vibe of like, and like if you are if 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 like I don't think I will, I don't think I will have like, have this ruin me for like lost episodes, just because that's the kind of person I am. Mm -hmm. But like for somebody else, like that, this might ruin their entire perspective. An enjoyment of the silly lost, uh, the the silly and horrific lost episodes subgenre of creepypasta. Yeah, if because you're like keeping yeah. your head in the realm of supernatural and how the supernatural is affecting this, like through a demon or whatever is um, being portrayed in the story, or even just like the mystery, the like the mystery is kind of gone now. Yeah, for for that person. Yeah, and because of that. I'm going to have to switch my recommendation from a yes to a partial because I really did enjoy reading it. But mm -hmm. I'm going to have that thought in the back of my head now. Thanks, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, ruining for everything for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's <just> thumbs up. <laughs> but no, like, 
Um, sorry, yes, I'm leaving as a partial. Mikey, I don't hate you for it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just an, a very interesting take that I didn't think I would see in this story that it itself is a very interesting take that I would not have seen coming. So you uh, were so getting you're broadsided just... repeatedly. <laughs> so you were inceptioned again. Yeah, again. <laughs> we're in the third layer now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a recommendation, a non recommendation, and a partial recommendation. We're running the gamut um, on this one. Honestly, like yeah, my, my recommendation is like it's getting close to the edge of a partial. Um, yeah. Mostly because of like, yeah, like I, I even I have to admit it's not very spooky, but it's this will not ruin like my enjoyment of of reading other like lost episodes and stuff like that. Um, mostly because I like spoilers, <laughs> I guess maybe you maybe do. that's it. It's like I do like spoilers. Yeah. I do like I do like seeing how things are made, like even spooky shit. So like it doesn't sometimes and sometimes it I have been burned by that like by yeah. like it like it is ruins it has ruined the magic of something and then sometimes it hasn't and. In this case, yeah. for me anyway, it hasn't ruined that. But I mean, I like spoilers too. But sometimes they put down like too much downforce on the back wheels, so you can't drift around the corner as much as you'd like. And anyway, <laughs> uh, with that being said, yeah. Like so, with that being said, <laughs> with that being said, <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess like make your own judgment call on this. Uh, if you're still listening to us and like checking, like like uh looking at our recommendations and such um yeah use your own judgment i suppose is the is the uh the takeaway here (laughs) since again we've we've got one a part where it's like a recommendation a non-recommendation and now a partial recommendation so we've run the gambit again (laughs) yeah here's the the summary of this if you like supernatural horror and you like being scared by supernatural creatures this is not the story for you yeah, if you like true crime and like mundane corporate horror, <laughs> like you might enjoy this. Or, or you, if you like documentaries about like true crime stuff, you might actually like this because this kind of feels like a true crime version, like true crime documentary version, um, or like where they're tackling a creepy pasta. <laughs> or more specifically, if you like Squidward Suicide and you want to have real world lore and immersion injected into it. Hundred percent, you're good to go right here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if you're looking for spooks, this probably if if you're looking for spooks, this probably won't do it for you. But if you're looking for something that's well written, (laughs) because I felt this was pretty well written. Yeah. Um, like there was only a few minor things, but like otherwise, again, like, did any of us want to stop reading this? Aside from like the, the um, the the. Uh, is this spooky? Is this like not spooky? Like uh, th- that aside, um, like in terms of the writing and stuff, did any one of us want to stop reading this? No, um, it, read. it was an easy read. Like, it, yeah, there wasn't a ton of grammatical errors that made you go, uh, and then you had to stop partway through. And <laughs> I know that's a low bar on our show. <laughs> <laughs> the grammar position, we flew right past it because there's nothing really there. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I honestly, the, I only had two because I was like, well, there's two squiggly lines under those words. I should probably address that, <laughs> otherwise, somebody else is going to cheater. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what I've been doing. You got to learn years. this shit bareback, man. Like Fuck that. <laughs> I've been doing this for years. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not turn back now. Down. You pull that in from under me, I'll fall down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all that to say. Um, yeah, use your own judgment on this kind of story uh, based on our recommendations, if you so wish. So um, that will be this week's episode. If you like what you heard, or if you didn't, leave us a comment in the comment section below. This gets posted, whether it be on Podbean, Facebook, YouTube, or Tumblr. We're all on Twitter. Mikey is at the East Ends for Evil. The Gamer in Yellow is at the Gamer in Yellow, but without that W at the end, because his name is very long. Yeah. And I'm at Review Cultist. If you'd like to send us emails, uh, you can send them to aldenterigamortis at gmail.com. That's A-L-D-E-N-T-E-R-I-G-A-M-O-R-T-S at gmail.com. We can also leave us suggestions for other creep pastas, SCPs, spooky things. You creep it, we'll peep it. Yeah! And if you'd like to help support our show financially, you can go to Patreon. Look up Aldenterigamortis and select the backer tier you'd like to support us at. 
We have $2 and $5 tier with special episodes, early access, extra content. To our patrons that are helping support the show, thank you immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay. And as always, we very much appreciate that. And to our listeners and the authors of these stories, thank you immensely. Because without your listenership, it'd be like screaming into the void. And without your authorship, we wouldn't have we we wouldn't we wouldn't have this 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 discussion this it was a kind of a pretty like like interesting in depth kind of, or like kind of an interesting like discourse um the, of like various opinions on the subject matter of this story so uh we wouldn't have that if you didn't write the story and post it online so regardless thank you so until next time i have been your host review cultist i'm mikey the used to answer evil and i'm the gamer in yellow and this has been aldente brigamortis sleep well